We're live. It, we're, we're live, so, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like Hi. It. <laughs> Online. <laughs> oh, my key. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Amen. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. <laughs> Let's stand if we're able, and let's ask God to bless this time together. Can we do that? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, I love you, and I thank you, and I praise you, Lord. What a glorious privilege we have, oh God, to come before you, to come into your presence with thanksgiving, oh God. So, Lord, right now, Lord, we just lay everything at your feet, oh, God. Every worry, every care, every burden, every ache, every pain, every distraction. Lord, we cast it all on you right now, Lord God. And, Lord, I just ask that you have your way in this place, oh, God. Holy Spirit, have your way. Help us to hear your voice, oh, God, that you would lead every word, every song, everything that is done, everything that's played, everything that is sung. <laughs> oh, be glorified in our praises tonight, oh, God. For we're going to be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. Savior, 
Hallelujah, great and mighty is our God. Hallelujah, just turn and say hello to somebody. Let's just take a minute. Hallelujah, we love you. This is kind of a quick fast and in a hurry family time. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Would you do me a favor? Right there. to turn into this intro kind of an islandy thing and I kind of got made fun of so I won't do the ooh, ah, 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 thing <laughs> oh I just did didn't I <laughs> it is the cry of my heart to follow you it is the cry of my heart to be close to you it is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life it is the cry it is the cry of my heart to close to you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. All of the days, all of the days of my life. Teach me your holy ways. Teach me your holy ways, oh Lord, so I can walk in your truth. Teach me your holy ways, O oh Lord. Make me wholly devoted to you. It is the cry. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. All of the days. All of the days of my life. Open my eyes right here. Open my eyes so I can see the wonderful things that you do. Open my heart up more and more. Make me wholly devoted to you. cry of my heart to follow you it is the cry of my heart to be close to you it is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. all of the days all of the days of my life. all the days of my life all of the days of my life hallelujah lord jesus heart to follow you Lord not just to go through the motions not just to sing the song but to glorify you every day Lord every hour thank you Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah. yeah that one's almost worthy of a little ooh, ah, 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 andale, andale. glorify you Jesus in an island way right <laughs> it's okay if we have fun in church it's okay <laughs> uh, Jamaican me sad when you're not <laughs> oh 
all glory. <laughs> I don't apologize. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Hallelujah. We ought to be just happy. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And sometimes we feel like this. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to Go ahead. Walking around these heart. walls, here we go. Is it touching yours? Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall, but you have never failed me yet. Oh, Jesus. Waiting for change to come. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. And you never will. I know the night won't last. I know the night won't last. Because your word, your word will come to pass. Hallelujah. My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, Jesus, you're still enough. Jesus, you're still enough. Promise still stands, your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me I'll see. 
pause we pause without an agenda just to sit at your feet oh God to bask in your embrace oh God Lord forgive us for just going through the motions Lord set my spirit free to worship you Lord, break every chain in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, I know there are our needs manifested in here today, Lord, that are needed. Lord, but you are the life giver. You are the chain breaker. You are the healer. So, Lord, we just give it over to you right now, Lord God. Lord, and even though we might have walked around this wall a few times, Lord, we've seen you move. We've seen you move the mountains, Lord God. 
and we know that you are able to do exceedingly above all that we would ever ask or seek oh God so Lord we just remember now and we put our trust in you oh God and we thank you ahead of time for the victories oh God hallelujah Lord Lord I thank you for deliverance I thank you for healing I thank you for freedom in Jesus name Hallelujah, Jesus. Worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy. It's the Lord. Let's lift his name, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, you are Jesus, Jesus. I want you just to begin to express your worship and praise to the King of Kings. Lord, we praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. The Lord God Almighty. Let's sing the name again, Jesus. You are Jesus. the Lord God Almighty. Oh, mighty, 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 mighty Lord. Oh, oh, Jesus. Holy, holy.
Lord, I just don't even feel like I've got words adequate to express how worthy you are tonight. How grateful that I am, God, to be called by you. How grateful that I am, Lord, to be numbered among your chosen. God, the honor that I have for being these folks' pastor. God, I'm grateful for it. I'm so grateful. God, I pray tonight, Lord, that you would rightly deserve and receive all the worship and all the praise and all the accolades and all the uh, commendation, all of it, Lord, tonight. Because you are worthy, worthy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Jesus, Jesus. At that name, demons tremble. Captives are set free by speaking the name of Jesus. It's not just another name. There's power. There's dunamis in that name. Lord, you're worthy, 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 worthy. You're my Savior, my Redeemer. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. We worship you, Lord. God, we reverence you in this house. God, we just bow before your throne. God, in your presence, Lord, we're just humbled. And Kathy sang about the walls, and we've went around the walls so many times. And God, it just doesn't seem like they'd come down, and then all of a sudden you just make a way you've never failed us Lord God we have failed you so miserably so many times but you have never failed us God you're a faithful God Lord in these first few days of this brand new year Lord I pray God that your power, your Holy Spirit would begin to just uh, emanate in, in our lives and through our lives, God, that lives would be changed and transformed. God, I, I pray for Kevin tonight, Lord, that you would heal him, uh, these hernias, oh God. I pray, God, that you would set him free. I pray, God, that you would take the pain away in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift D to you tonight, Lord. Know that, uh, God, she's got these... Uh, uh, bone spurs and in her in her neck and in her vertebrae there in her neck lord god and I, I pray god that you would just touch her and relieve that pain god in jesus name lord we lift ron to you tonight as well god lord we pray you touch him and heal him father god lord we lift little jasmine to you tonight god this blood sugar level out of control and god i just pray that you would just uh, arrest that and bring it back lord into the into the parameters lord that you designed her body to work under lord i just thank you for it right now god i thank you for it right now jesus god i thank you we thank you jesus Lord, I pray for Mark and his family, God, for healing pneumonia and back problems. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, set them free. I pray for Troy tonight, God. I pray that you would heal his leg, Father God. Heal him, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you know every need. You know every need. You know every need, Lord. 
God, I again want to just lift Harry to you tonight. His, this heart issue, God, we're going to keep pounding on heaven's door until he gets deliverance and healing from that in Jesus' name. Lord, we continue to pray for Marsha's son tonight, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I lift Karen Moraine's daughter to you tonight, God. Would you get a hold of her heart? God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You're worthy, worthy, Lord. You're holy, holy, holy. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. God is so good, church. He's so good. He's so worthy of all of our praise and all of our worship. Aren't you glad for that tonight? Aren't you glad that He's your Lord? That He's God Almighty? That there is none mightier than Him? Thank you, Jesus. Well, Father, we just prepare our hearts right now, God, to give unto you this offering. Lord, that we would uh, bless you. That you would bring the increase that you would make a way where sometimes there just doesn't seem to be any way, but God, you, you cause our finances to grow and to stretch, Lord, when we trust you with them. So tonight, God, as we receive the tithe and the offering, Lord, would you be glorified in it and through it. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen. God bless you as you give. If you go to our website harvestca.org, on the far right of the menu bar across the top of our site, you will see the Give button. Clicking on that button will take you to the page with the section titled How We Give. You will be presented with several ways that you can donate to the church. As always, you can give using an envelope during the offering we take up at each service at church. The second option Tithely, which is actually an app you can download on your phone. 
The third option is by clicking on the green Give Now button you can make an online donation directly from this web page. Quickly and securely you can fill out the page and give from there. Lord, we stand on those promises tonight. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. I'm still in your hands. God, there's, uh, I'm confident, oh God, that I'm still in your hands. And Lord, I thank you for this offering right now. God, I thank you for what it represents. Some of it sacrificial, some was easy to give but all give Lord and I pray God that you would bless the gift and the giver Lord for those that give online over the over the internet maybe have not even ever been here but they give God I pray right now that you'd bless them God that you'd bless them for their faithfulness now God I thank you for this offering in Jesus name and everybody said amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, that was a great worship service. That was a great worship service. Can we just give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise? God, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, worship team. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, it was awesome. It was awesome. One of these days, I'm going to get to see that. I want to see it, man. I want these rafters to be filled with that Shekinah glory, that manifest presence of God. Amen? Listen, I'll guarantee you when that happens, you won't be walking around. You won't be talking to your neighbor. You'll be on your, you might be just sucking carpet, that, you know, sucking the dirt out of the cracks on the concrete. Has everybody got a salvation uh, worksheet? Tammy's passing them out. Everybody, we... Dog, Dennis's dog ate his. <laughs> right there. All right. All right. Everybody got pens, writing sticks, all that good stuff? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's like passing out homework in school. It just sends tremors up my spine. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, and he gives it to us. Isn't that awesome? So, the definition of salvation, I'm, I'm going to back up a little bit here, Michelle. Um, the definition of salvation is 
being saved from the power and the dominion of sin in our life and from an eternity separated from God. Listen, you can read through the scriptures and you'll find in there that how it de- describes hell, that it's, a, you know, it's a, a lake of burning fire and sulfur and it talks about being burnt but never burnt up. It talks about being, being eaten by bugs but never consumed. You know, it it talks about the gnashing of teeth and it talks about utter darkness and those kinds of things. But in my opinion, what really makes hell hell is the fact that God ain't going to be there. Amen? I mean, he is not going to be there. And so what is God's gift to you and I? Well, according to John 3 and 16 and Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, I want to just share those. Verse 16 of chapter 3 of John, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. And then verse 23 of Romans chapter 6, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Man, isn't that awesome? See, the entire gospel comes into focus in John chapter 3 and verse 16. And God is not just, uh, his love isn't just to a, a certain group of individuals. It literally offers that to the entire world. Amen? You think about the worst person that you know. The, you know, the guys that are sitting in prison that are awaiting the death penalty for whatever they've done. Can I just tell you tonight, God loves that person. Christ died for those people. God said he's not willing that any would perish but that all would come to the saving knowledge of, of Christ. But that doesn't mean that they're all going to come. But, but if God has his way, nobody's going to go to hell. But the reality is, along with salvation, he has given us a free will. He's given us the choice. So God's love is, is not static. It's not self-centered. It reaches out and it draws other people in. And God, his, his, his actions define the pattern of true love. And the basis of all true love relationships is when you love somebody, you're willing to sacrifice dearly for that person. Sacrificial love is the kind of love that we probably struggle with the most as humans and as, as individuals because sac- sacrificial love is, is practical in seeking ways to meet the needs of those who are loved. In fact, sacrificial love expresses itself in, 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 uh, without the assurance that the love that you give out will even be returned in kind. In other words, you have to love, well, if we love in hopes of receiving something back, you're loving for the wrong reason. Um, Our love, I I need to just love you just because you're my brother and because Christ is in us and and, and, and I, you know, if you love me back, that's great. If you don't, I'm still going to love you. I know it and I don't want it. But too many times, love is performance-based. Did you hear me? Too often, love is performance-based. Well, I love you as long as... As long as you perform to my satisfaction. Can I just tell you something? God loved us while we were yet sinners, while we were still His enemies. And so the timing of sacrificial love is what Paul is highlighting here in Romans 5 and verse 8. But God demonstrated. See, it's one thing to talk about love. It's another thing to demonstrate love. 
And verse 8 says, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So in God's case, the love was infinitely practical since it set out to rescue you and I who have no hope of rescuing ourselves. God paid dearly. He, he gave his only begotten son the highest price that he could pay. And, and Romans 6 and 23, as we've already read, that talks about the wages and the gift and the result of sin is not just physical death. Everybody's going to die if we don't get raptured. Amen? Everybody dies physically, believers and unbelievers alike. So this is referring to eternal separation from God in hell. And so this, this is the wage that a person receives for their rebellion against God. Have you ever heard somebody say, oh, I, I'm just going to go to hell with all my buddies and we're just going to party it up and blah, 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 blah. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It's just ridiculous because there ain't going to be no partying. There's going to be a lot of screaming and crying. There's going to be a lot of torment. Make no mistake. Those in hell will find no comfort in the truth that they have been paid exactly what they earned. You said a mouthful there. He said, thank God that we don't get what we deserve. Because what we deserve was that cross. What we deserve was that beating that that Jesus took in our place. What we deserve is hell. But God. But God. Um, eternal life, instead, instead of, rather, instead of wages, those who believe receive this precious gift from God, we call it eternal life. They're on your, on your uh, handout. Eternal life doesn't mean endless life on earth. It means re uh, resurrection from death to eternal glory with God. And so because eternal life is a gift, we can't earn it or purchase it. I, I deal with that so often. Well, pastor, what do I have to do to, to get saved? What do I have to do? You, you don't have to do anything except accept Jesus. That's all you can do. It's, just, it's, it's a free gift. It would be foolish for somebody to offer to pay for a gift that's been given out of love. That would be, that would be a slam. That would be, yeah, it wouldn't be good. So to be a gift, it has to be given and receive, uh, and receive a more appropriate response to a loved one who offers a gift is grateful acceptance. Thank you so much. I don't really, you know, I don't deserve it, but, well, I'm sure gratefully you gave it to me. Amen. Our salvation is a gift of God, not something of our own doing. You and I have been saved because of His mercy. Not because of anything that you and I have done on our part. Listen, I'm not your pastor because I'm good. I'm not your pastor because I'm... I'm uh, anything special to God. He picked me just like he picked the rest of you. He chooses who he wants. He saves us out of his mercy. You are free to choose between two masters. But listen, church. You're free to choose between two masters, but you are not free to adjust the consequences of your choice. You choose Jesus, Heaven awaits you. You choose to reject Jesus, hell awaits you. And you can't change that once it's too late. Each of the two masters pays with his own kind of currency. The currency of sin is death. That's all you can expect or hope from, for in life without God. Christ's currency, ha, eternal life. 
Eternal life with God that begins on earth and continues forever with God. Amen? So how are you saved? Let's look at that. The answer is found in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For, you, for by grace, is it an acrostic? Is it, is it an acrostic when you take a word and, and break the letters down and make another word out of all the letters? So an acrostic then for grace would be God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. I just threw that in there. That was free. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Grace here refers to the multifaceted gift that God makes available to us despite our unworthiness. So not only then does God mercifully withhold the judgment and the punishment that we deserve, He grants instead the almost unbelievable gift of forgiveness, of salvation, and on top of that, eternal life. Right. Well, to each one of us, he's given a measure of faith. Whether we're saved or not, he's given us that measure of faith. Well, he's given you a whole lot uh, more faith than me. No, I don't believe that. I believe you've got the exact same faith that I've got. Well, we, we just the, You're running the church, man. I, and, and you've got so much energy and enthusiasm for Christ. I wish I had it. I, I have, you know, I, I, I'm like 4%, and you're like 100%. I don't get it. Well, if I can pick up 200 pounds and you can only pick up 100 pounds, how are you going to increase that? I have to exercise. You have to exercise. Go. I have to exercise my faith. You have to exercise your faith. Well, you certainly do a good well, job of it. well, I don't know about all that. All I know is that God is no respecter of persons at all. What he's done for one, he'll do for another. Listen, what he's done for me, he'll do for you. If you'll just say, God, here I am, I'm going to, uh, you know, use me. He'll use you. The reason why we're illuminated, how you put it, and others aren't, is because they choose not to be. They choose not to be. They're dead. They don't exercise. They're dead in sin. How can we choose God? We can't choose God. He gives us the faith. Yeah. And he's given it to everybody. But at some point, somewhere along the line, you got to make a choice. Joshua said in chapter 24 in the book of Joshua, Joshua said, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. And he said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Every one of us have a choice to make. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that means everybody, everybody's whosoever, whosoever believes in him, Call on his name. Look at this. For by grace you've been saved through faith. Not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Not of works. Listen, if we add anything to our salvation, we're in trouble. It's the free gift of God. I can't earn it. All I can do is walk in it and accept it. And the enemy wants to, huh? It, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so here, I think that I feel like there's going to be a lot of people that one day are going to miss heaven by 18 inches. That distance between your head and your heart, because you can have all the head knowledge you want. You can know the Bible inside and out, but if you don't apply it to your life, to your heart, and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, 
All that knowledge is just going to go right straight to hell with you. And you know that song, never fail me, yet? Forget the yet. Forget the yet. Yeah. He's never failed He's me. Never, He's never will fail me. And never will. That's why we add that he never will. <laughs> yeah. And he, he won't. He will never fail us. Thank God for that. God's grace requires faith because the moral and legal case against us leads to the inevitable verdict of guilty. I jumped a ways, didn't I? Yeah. Not only does God mercifully withhold the judgment and punishment that we deserve, huh? He grants instead the almost unbelievable gifts of forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. Forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. So grace means the forgiveness of our sins, and it cannot be earned by our works or by, by any goodness in us, because you know what? There is no goodness in us. The, uh, is, it, is it Isaiah uh, that says that, that, that our heart is deceitfully wicked? And, there, and there's nothing good in it? Our righteousness is as filthy rags? We can't earn it. It's free, it's undeserved favor that is on us by Christ's faithfulness act of redemption. We have been redeemed. What is redeemed? What does it mean to be redeemed? How does redemption happen? A price has to be paid. A price has to be paid. And the value of an object, if you've ever watched uh, that American Pickers show, The value of an object is, is really, at the end of the day, determined by what someone's willing to pay for that object. If, if I've got something in my hand, and to me, this thing's worth $300, but Harry comes in and Harry says, well, I'll, I'll give you $200 for it. If I give, if I give in and, and, and sell it to him for $200, I've just dropped what I perceived as the value a hundred dollars so that you can have it. So in your in your opinion, it's a two hundred dollar value, even though I thought it was a three hundred dollar value. When you think about your life, and so many of us feel like we're less than. So many of us feel like how in the world could could you know well, frankly, there's been so many of us that have been told all of our life you'll never amount to a hill of beans. Right. We're not talking about politics tonight. But, but here's the thing. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God, offered himself as the payment, the redemption payment for every one of us. So when you start feeling like maybe you're less than, or somebody says you'll never amount to anything, or you'll never measure up, or, or whatever. You just think about the price that was paid for you. Because Jesus Christ gave his life. The free and undeserved favor that is on us by Christ's act of redemption. Our salvation comes from God's grace alone. Right. We're, we're the same. No matter how righteous, how sinful we are, in ourselves, in ourselves, we're the same. Right. See, the ground's level at the foot of the cross. They're, 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 the ground is level. So our salvation comes from God's grace alone. Amen. That's on your, on your paper. 
So Paul, Paul is, is, is firm at, that absolutely nothing uh, is of our own doing, not of ourselves, not salvation, not grace, not even the faith exercised to receive this salvation. It's all a gift of God. Every bit of it. I love what William Temple said. He said, the only thing, the only thing that a man can, can contribute to his redemption is the sin from which he needs to be redeemed. That's the only thing you can give. People find it difficult to accept something so free, so willingly given, so available to anyone. We want to feel as though we did something. We want to feel as though we somehow earned our salvation by our merit. But Paul's words are unmistakable. If salvation is by God's grace and is accepted through faith, then it is not of works. That's in your, that's in your little pamphlet. It's not of works. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. All right. So if salvation could be earned by good works, then people would by nature boast about it they would boast about how good their works were they would begin to compare the goodness of their works with others good works and 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 do only good to boast about it man brother Ray, you ought to see what i did uh-huh what are you doing huh see that we begin boasting and and ray says well i did this and i well i'll one up you tomorrow and then not and then we and it just it's terrible it's, it's ridiculous no one and i close with this no one could ever be good enough to please a holy god no one no one can ever please a holy God. Our only hope is to fall down at the cross, cry out to God and say, Father, forgive me. Amen? And you know what the good news is? He'll do it. He'll do it over and over and over. He will, he will meet you there every time you meet Him there. He loves you. He loves me. And he has, he has the greatest plans for us if we would just submit to them. Amen? It's like, it's like you and God riding a, 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 a two-seater bicycle. If, if you and God were going to go on a ride on a two-seater bicycle, chances are, You'd want to be in the front seat. Amen? And God, you just sit in the back and pedal because you're all powerful. There's, there's that, that uh, sticker, God is my co-pilot. We're in the wrong seat. <laughs> in the wrong seat. <laughs> yeah. Because we don't think that if God, God can sit in the front seat and take us on a way better journey and provide the power. Amen? We got to give him front seat. We just need to. Well, listen, I, I appreciate you allowing me to ramble here a little bit tonight and, and try and get some of God's Word into you. I'm, I'm grateful for the discussion that we've had. That I think that's fantastic. Um, our worship was fantastic. Listen, uh, if, if, you're, if you are fasting, uh, Tammy has all kinds of uh, br uh, brochures and stuff over there that, that you can 
learn and read about and so forth. And, and, uh, but listen, just be praying. Just be praying that God will, is going to begin to do things like we've never seen before. That God is going to begin to touch this city and, and, and release his anointing over this city. I'd love for people to drive down the freeway and see the Shekinah glory of God hovering over Myrtle Creek, Oregon. Amen? And, and people would just have to drive in and find out what in the world's going on. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, that you love us. Unconditionally, you love us, Lord, with a love that, that, that we can't even fathom. But, Lord, I pray tonight, God, as we go from this house, God, that we would... That, that your word would continue to just stir within us, oh God, that we would, that we would be compelled and moved, Lord, to, to do all that you have called us to do, to be all you have called us to be. And Lord, I pray tonight, God, that we would begin to seek your face for Sunday. God, I pray, Lord, that, that, that Sunday would be a, a great day in the Lord, that, that people would bring uh, the lost in here, God, that they would be able to get saved. And, and Lord, I, I just pray that you would move across this city and across our entire region, Lord, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, that your anointing would break the people free, oh God, to come into this place. God, I pray for people, Lord, that have just that are just laying out and just uh, coming to church whenever they feel like it or when the mood strikes them. I pray, God, that they would understand and realize that it isn't about my mood. It isn't about whether I feel like I want to go or not. But, God, you've, com you've, you've told us and to, to, to come in and to compel us to come in and to not forsake the fellowshipping together of one another. And all the more, the Bible says, as we see the day approaching, Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you that we can always fall back on your word and we can rely on your word to be truth and life. And for that, I give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen and amen. God bless you. God go with you. Ladies, 7 o'clock or 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. 7 o'clock. Wow. Said no woman ever. 10 o'clock tomorrow. Men, 6.30 right here. Friday night. I just want...